This is Kardec Radio bringing to you the book Among Brothers of Other Lands, written by several spirit authors, and Psycho, graphed by Chico Xavier and Waldo Vieira. This partial audio recording will cover Chapter 30, Study of the Parable. Enjoy. Chapter 30, Study of the Parable, by Brother X. We were commenting about the necessity of spreading the Spiritist doctrine when the Rabbi Zohar ben Ozias, a distinguished Israeli leader in the spiritual world who is currently devoted to the truths of the Gospel, asked permission to paraphrase the parable of the talents as told by Jesus. And so he simply said, My friends, the Lord of the earth left temporarily from the world and called three of his servants. Considering the potential of each one, he entrusted them some of his own riches as a loan, telling them that he would meet them later in the superior life. To the first servant he handed money, power, comfort, skills, and prestige. To the second one he gave intelligence and authority, and the third servant he gave the spiritist knowledge. After a long period of time, the three scared and vacillating servants appeared before the Lord for the settling of accounts. The first one moved forward and said, Lord, I made no sense, and I could not fulfill your will, which determines goodness for all of your subjects. But with the five talents that you put in my hands, I started to cultivate, although with very little results. Other five that are work, progress, friendship, hope, and gratitude in some of the friends that remained in the world. Forgive me, O divine friend, if I couldn't do more. And the Lord answered calmly, That is all right, loyal servant, because you didn't err intentionally. Go back to the terrestrial field and restart the interrupted work by rebirthing under the support of those affections you gathered. Then came the second servant and claimed, Lord, please deign to forgive my inability. I could not understand clearly the designs that set down equal happiness for all creatures, and I perpetrated lamentable mistakes. Even though I mobilized the two values that you gave me, with them I gained two others that are culture and experience for many of the siblings that remained on earth. The sublime benefactor replied, satisfied, it is all right, loyal servant, because you did not make the mistakes intentionally. Go back to the terrestrial fields and restart the interrupted work, rebirthing under the support of those affections you gathered. The third one moved forward and explained, Lord, I give you back the spiritus knowledge as pure and untouched as I received it from your generosity. The spiritus knowledge is light, Lord, and with it I have learned that your law is too hard attributing to each person according to his or her own works. How can we be such bright and live lamps when human beings on earth are divided by nightmares of envy and jealousy, cruelty and illusion? How can we employ the light of your truth without hurting or bothering? And how to bother and hurt without bringing regrettable consequences to myself? You know that the truth among human beings creates problems wherever it appears. Due to this, I was afraid of your law, and I considered it more reasonable for me to maintain the quietness of my home. And, thinking like that, I hid the gift that you had recommended for me to apply. Here, I return this wealth back to you without even a minimal touch on my part. The sublime creditor, however, feeling kind of sad and austere, ordered that the treasure of the spiritist knowledge be taken from him and immediately given to the two diligent helpers that would be sent to earth again, firmly declaring, Unfaithful servant, due to your negligence, there is no other alternative but to restart your work through the obscure obstacles of the beginning. Lord, Lord, cried the careless servant, where is your equity? You have given my fellows money, power, comfort, skills, prestige, intelligence, and authority, while to me you gave only the spiritist knowledge. How can you allow the whole weight of your severity to fall on me? The Lord, however, softly explained, You ignored that I attributed to you the light of the truth as being the greatest good of all. If both of your fellows did not set everything right, 
it is because they missed the discernment that you could have given them through your example. You ran away from sharing your example by fearing the responsibility of correcting with love and working with instruction. By hiding the wealth that I lent to you, not only did you lose yourself due to the fear of suffering and helping, but you also damaged the deficient work of your fellows. Their work in the world would have reached greater efficiency for eternal goodness had they received a portion of the love, service, humbleness, and patience that you denied them. Lord, Lord, why? sobbed the unfortunate servant. Why such harshness if your law is one of mercy and justice? Then the assistance of the Lord conducted the disloyal servant to the shadows of resumption, while clarifying to him that the law, in fact, is a discipline of mercy and justice. But there is one difference. For the individuals who ignore their duty, justice arrives through the permit of mercy. But for the ones who are aware of their own duties, mercy comes through the prison of justice. London, England, August 10th. 1965.